And the Lord just told me that this is a debt cancellation offering also. Because we're going to break our agreement with judgments that we put against people that we thought owed us when we've already been forgiven by the Lord. Okay, it's Matthew 18. And this is Jesus talking. He says, therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a human king who wished to settle accounts. God wants to settle your accounts tonight. With his servants. When he began accounting, one who was brought to him owed him 10,000 talents, probably about $10 million. And because he could not pay his debt... The master ordered him to be sold with his wife and his children and everything that he possessed and payment be made. So the attendant fell on his knees begging him, have patience with me and I'll pay everything. And his master's heart was moved with compassion and he released him and forgave him, canceling the debt. Jesus died to cancel your debt of sin. And your, which includes your financial debt, the debt of sickness, the debt of the curse, the debt of death, everything. All debts canceled through Christ. And even though you could owe $10 million, Jesus forgives your debts. So this is a debt canceling offering tonight. Then it says, but that same attendant... As he went out and found one of his fellow attendants who owed him a hundred denarii, about 20 bucks, caught him by the throat and said, pay what you owe. So his fellow attendant fell down and begged him earnestly, like he'd begged the master, give me time and I'll pay you all. But he was unwilling. And he went out and had him put in prison so he should pay the debt. Jesus has forgiven us of all of our sin, but yet sometimes we are unwilling to release the judgments of unforgiveness and offense and bitterness that we have against other people, even though Jesus has forgiven us of the same or more. When his fellow attendants saw what happened, because he had put that man who owed him 20 bucks into prison when he got released of $10 million worth of sin. But yet we'll hold somebody to account for 20 bucks. We'll be unforg in, in unforgiveness against them for this thing they said or this thing they did or this other thing that went on with their life. And here these, these, these sins that are freely forgiven by Jesus are equated to actual money, to actual prosperity, to actual economic gain in this story. How many times has Jesus forgiven us of the 10 million things that we have done against him and other people, but yet we hold on to the 20 bucks of offense and bitterness. Are you with me? When his fellow attendants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and they went and told everything that had taken place to the master. Then the master called him and said, you contemptible wicked servant, I forgave and canceled all the great debt of yours because you begged me to and you should not have had pity or mercy on your fellow attendant as I had pity and mercy on you. And in wrath, his master turned him over to the torturers, the jailers, that he should pay all that he owed. So my heavenly father would deal with every one of you if you do not freely forgive your brother from your heart of his offenses. Listen, what happened is, is he ended up doing that and ended up throwing this guy in prison because he judged him. He ju you got, you only 20 bucks. I'm, I'm going to have my, I'm going to get my money. But yet he forgot that he had been freely forgiven all this other $10 million worth of money. And he got thrown, it says, into the prison, into the hands of the torturers. We're not torturers. They represent here demonic spirits. Okay, that begin to torture us when we stay in a place of unforgiveness 
towards someone even though Jesus has forgiven us much. These judgments cause us to be legally imprisoned and sent into the hands of torturers, demonic powers. What you don't realize is when you do this, you, when you hold on to the unforgiveness of the judgment of unforgiveness, you are put into the hands of demonic spirits. You are put in prison. You are imprisoned in sickness. You're imprisoned in poverty. You're imprisoned in debt. You are imprisoned in all these ways. And the torturers, the demonic spirits, have authority to then attack you, put sickness on you, break up your marriage, cause you to have complete unrest, to lose your peace, and everything else. And guess what? That guy that owed 10 million bucks and got forgiven... He not only ended up in prison, but what he didn't realize is what, and what everybody doesn't realize is he also put the guy that owed him 20 bucks into prison at the hands of the torturers. You don't realize that when you're holding on to judgments, bad false judgments against people, you put them in prison and you give the legal right for demonic torturers to torture them. You become responsible for that person being demonically assaulted and infested and, uh, and attacked. You become res responsible for them being put in the hands of the torturers. And then you end up in the hands of the torturers too. So when you release forgiveness tonight... And you remove the judgments that you've been putting against people. They're this, they're that, they did this, they did that. That person, blah, blah, that person, blah, blah. When you do that, and you break your agreement with that tonight, you're going to escape the prison escape the tortures and release them from prison and the demonic torment that they're under. And this is going to cancel your debt even financially because Jesus tied this parable of forgiving our brother from our heart of their offenses with the fact that our debts, our money, monetary debts would be canceled. Get your seed ready. Get your seed ready right now. Can we have some keyboards or something? Get your seed ready right now. Tony said this is the year of judgments. We want to be on the right side of that. We don't want to judge not, least ye be judged. When ye are judged, you are thrown into prison to the hands of the tormentors. And when you judge, that person is the same. Now in... Zephaniah 3, 15, it says, And it will be in that day that the Lord will take away the judgments that are against you. Because then he has cast out your enemy. The King of Israel, even the Lord himself, is in your midst. And after he has come to you, you shall not experience fear or evil anymore. Jesus is going to take away the judgments, not only that you've put upon people, and it put them in prison to the tormentors. But he's also tonight going to take away the judgments that people put against you unrighteously that put you in prison under the hands of demonic torment. The people that talked about you. The people that judged you. The people that gossiped about you. The people that that people have released are broken against them. Now everybody pray out loud with me. Ready? Say, Lord God, I rescind and I make a null and a void every judgment I've spoken up on the stage, please, all the team, against anyone ever 
I refuse from this moment on to ever speak ill about anyone ever again because I realize the truth that when I do that a judgment will be released against them they will be put into prison they will be tormented by demons and so will I I rescind every word of judgment against any person I ask for forgiveness I repent for it now and I also separate myself legally from any judgments that has been released against me by other people's words by their gossip
God's Spirit filled the grave, breathing life into the body of the Lamb who had been slain, and resurrecting like a lion as the stone was rolled away. Jesus Christ, now.
people and tribe and every nation and tongue. He has made us a kingdom, a priest to God. Is anyone
meditating on offense and bitterness. The spirit of judgment and burning are in the house tonight to cleanse you. And then a divine canopy of his love and protection is entering and being built over us to protect us from everything the enemy has against, anything the enemy has planned, anything the economy would bring against us, anything the government has against us, anything that anyone, any witch or warlock has in plans and stores to try to curse us, to bring our downfall, any sickness or disease, we will be covered, we are covered by the divine love and protection of God. Turn to your neighbor and begin to put your hand on their head right now. Command the spirit of judgment and burning to come and judge every evil thought, every harmful thought, every wicked thought, every offended and bitter thought, every everything that would bring you down, that would create a stronghold, that would cause you to be positionally robbed of your inheritance in Christ right now. Invite it. Open your heart for judgment and burning. The spirit of judgment and burning. The spirit of judgment and burning. Right now, pray over their mind. Cleanse their mind. Judge every wicked thought right now. Judge every manipulation, every deceit, every lie. Judge cowardice. Judge rebellion. Judge pride. Judge everything inside of them with the spirit of judgment and burning. Burn up everything that is not that is chaff. Burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now. Act as a judge on their behalf. 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 Righteous judgments against every evil, every perverseness, every bent, every twist. Right now. Right now. Right now.
no, everybody look at me. I want to remind you of who you are. And then we're going to activate into burning away and judging the trauma. Because many of us are still gripped by trauma. And we can judge that trauma and release burning fire to consume the spirit of burning fire and spirit of judgment to consume trauma on each other's behalf. This is the righteous judgments of God. And you as judges are called to do this. To judge anything that harms the body of Christ. Sue, put up Psalm 82. This is who you are. And this is how strong God feels about you being judges in this hour. Psalm 82 says this. Verse 1. God calls the judges into his courtroom. He puts all the judges in the dock. Enough. You've corrupted justice long enough. You've let the wicked get away with murder. Who's he saying this to? The judges. Verse 5. Ignorant judges, head on, head in the sand judges. Where's verse 3 and 4? We're missing verse 3 and 4. I'm going to read it. that we can sue but if not I'm going to read it everybody can turn to it on their phone if they want in the message translation it says this God calls the judges into his courtroom he puts all the judges in the dock enough you have corrupted justice long enough you've let the wicked get away with murder now here's the next verse ready verse 3 it says this you're here to defend the defenseless your job, you are here to make sure the underdogs get a fair break. He's saying this to the judges. Your job is to stand up for the powerless and prosecute by judgments all who exploit the powerless. And it says, ignorant judges, head in the sand judges, you haven't a clue as what's going on. And now everything is falling apart in the world. Everything. We are called to be judges. And we cannot forget that. Now, there's something missing, so I'm going to go and look at it. Because you need to hear this. Because this is God speaking to you. If you doubted you were a judge... This is God speaking to you. He says this. Ignorant judges, head in the sand judges, you haven't a clue of what's going on and now everything in the world is falling apart. It's becoming unglued. Verse 6 through 7. I appointed you as judges. Each one of you. Deputies of the Most High God. But you have betrayed your commission. And now you're stripped of your rank. You're not to get mad talk about him you are supposed to judge the very root inside of him that is causing him to sin you are called to be judges Psalm 82 message Bible says I have appointed you as judges you have not made sure that justice was carried out. We must take our place, robed like Job, with robes of righteousness. In this hour, it's more crucial than ever. Now, God told me that many people in here have gone through cycles of trauma. One trauma after the other trauma after the other. Who am I talking to? 
wave. Wave your hands. Do you know that Job, who was a judge, went through cycles of trauma that enemy will actually make one storm after the other storm after the other storm after the other storm come upon you just to get you wounded in your soul so then he can have something in you that's in common with him and he can have power over you that's what he did to Job first he took out all his his servants and all of his herds and his flocks he stole all his money all his prosperity he took everything from him then he killed then the devil stirred up he created a whirlwind another actual physical storm and he took out the house where all Job's children were and killed them all and then if that wasn't enough storms and enough trauma then the enemy created a trauma of sickness on Job's physical body boils from the top of his head to the soles of his feet and those traumas wounded Job 23 times he says in the book of Job my soul is vexed my soul is mourning my soul is poured out my soul is bitter many of you been under a cycle of demonic assault that has been created to keep you traumatized so that your soul would be vexed your soul would be bitter your soul would be mourning and your soul would be poured out because when your soul is wounded by trauma the cycle of trauma that the enemy puts you under then he's got you right where he wants you then he has a landing strip to make you sick, to make you broke, because you will prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I want you to stand up and I want you to talk to the person next to you and find out what cycle of trauma you've been through. And then we're going to judge that demonic stratagem to do one attack after the other attack after the other attack after the other attack and we're going to put a stop to it tonight and then I want you to judge the altar of trauma in that person's soul and command them to be healed by the power of the Holy Spirit now stand up I want you to talk to the person next to you should announce to them I came here to bring you justice by judging on your behalf. Say I came here to bring you justice by judging on your behalf. Come on, tell the person next to you. Say I came here as a judge to judge and bring justice on your behalf. Say I came here as a judge to bring you justice. To bring you justice. are and start to judge it. Oh God, we judge that cycle of trauma right now. We judge that cycle of trauma that all these people have been through right now. In the name of Jesus right now, I judge that demonic stratagem that's been released against these people. I release a holy judgment from this court against every cycle of trauma. In the name of Jesus right now. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. The court's in session. The judges have taken their seat. And in the spirit, we are judging the enemy right now. And his cycle of trauma. The cycle of trauma. me. Shh, shh, shh. Can I have more money?
monitor and have more mic? I can't hear monitor. Everybody repeat after me. Say, Lord God, on behalf of the person next to me, I stand as a judge to bring justice. I've been appointed by God as a judge to bring justice and righteousness into the earth. And right now, that includes the person I'm praying for. I speak holy judgments as a judge from this court against every demonic strategy, every witchcraft strategy, every sorcerer's strategy, every giant strategy, every leviathan strategy, every python strategy, every legion strategy, every infirm spirit strategy, every cancerous strategy, every sickness strategy, against every poverty spirit, against every familiar spirit, against every demonic stratagem, I release as a judge a legal decree, a restraining order against the cycle of trauma that has happened to the person I'm praying for right now. And I decree this court will follow and execute my orders as a judge to completely stop down this cycle of trauma beginning now in the name of Jesus. Now everyone shout really loud to God. your hands on each other's heads and I want you to pray in the spirit and as you do pray in the spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to heal their soul of every bit of trauma go I mean go fierce go fierce go fierce after that trauma if you don't want nobody to lay hands on you then you lay hands on yourself come on put your hands on your head and start to decree the Holy Spirit is healing you of trauma right now in the name of Jesus you're being healed of trauma right now I declare it right now. I speak to every root of trauma. I speak to every altar of trauma. I decree those altars are being destroyed right now. Those altars of trauma are being filled with power in the name of Jesus right now. Your mind, will, and emotions are being healed of the memories of that trauma. That trauma is being broken off of you in the name of Jesus right now. 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 Come on, keep praying. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Do it for two more minutes. 